Thank you. It's uh, it's always a pleasure to be back. Thank you, uh, uh, Rafael and uh, oops <laughs> and the team for inviting me again. Um, so let me switch back to the proper screen for a second. Yeah, it should be okay now. No, okay, yeah. Here we go. All right, okay, ready now. Um, so my name is Julian. I, um, I'm a tech evangelist with AWS. I've been with them for three years now. And um, I focus on AI and machine learning for EMEA. And this morning, I would like to talk about deep learning again. Maybe some of you were there last year. And uh, I was probably already talking about deep learning. And you may remember my robot on stage and all the silly things that I was doing with it. Uh, so I didn't take the robot today. I've got another device. We'll get to that. Um, and I would like to talk about deep learning and show you how it is actually now quite easier to, uh, to use with a service that was launched at reInvent uh, at, uh, at the end of last year, a service called Amazon SageMaker. So let's get to that. So when it comes to our mission, I would say my mission maybe, uh, what I work for I every day is really to let all of you use machine learning in your projects. And some of you may be uh, experts, some of you may have uh, machine learning PhDs. No? All right, yeah, don't be afraid, it's, it's okay, right? Congra congratulations. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can, yeah, he worked hard on that. <laughs> All right, um, but see, uh, most of us don't uh, don't do that because uh, you know we have other interests, right? I guess, and they're perfectly respectable. But still, we would love to use machine learning in our projects. Okay, so we need to have uh, uh, tools and 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 services that let us do that and let us use machine learning for real life projects. So, uh, over the years, we built a machine learning stack, and I'm. I'm I'm guessing most of you are, are familiar with it now. Uh, we have a high level layer of services that we call the application services, like uh, Amazon Poly, the local hero. Yeah, so yeah for Poly, right? It's built in here. It's built a couple of, yeah, just a kilometer away, right? So uh, it powers Alexa as well, text to speech, etc. We have services like Amazon Recognition for uh, uh, image recognition, video recognition, etc., uh, etc. Et and these are great services, they do one thing really well, they don't require any training, they don't require you to bring your data, they don't require you to train, etc, etc. But of course, uh, for other applications, you need to work with your own data set, right? That's the whole point. You want to train your model, you want to control the algo that is used, you want to tweak all the parameters for the, for the, the algo, etc, etc. So, you have to take it down one layer and work with what we call the platform services, and that's where SageMaker lives, okay? And then we're going to focus on this one today. And uh, it's, I would say it's badly needed, because uh, for those of you who already do machine learning today, you know it is not easy. Um, it is very easy to use those high-level services like poly recognition, transcribe, etc. But the minute you move into using your data, using your algo, etc., you know, the real problems start. And you have to clear all these uh, walls, you have to break through those walls to get from your machine learning ID to your machine learning model in production, right? Preparing data, selecting an algo, selecting parameters, managing all that complex infrastructure for training, and then managing the infrastructure for deployment and scaling, and waking up in the middle of the night or working on weekends because something broke down and you have to go and, and, and you know, fix, fix it and restart it, etc., etc. And a lot of that is related to infrastructure and, and, and deployment and not so much to machine learning. And what we do is really to focus on machine learning, not on plumbing, not on infrastructure, okay? So that's the single reason why SageMaker was built to let everybody, experts and beginners, build machine learning into their applications 
with um, um, minimal pain and definitely minimal or almost zero infrastructure trouble, okay? So I'll show you a bunch of demos in a, in a few minutes. Uh, the first step is to help you build, and that means providing you with um, a development environment, um, and uh, I'm, I'm guessing you know, most of you will be familiar with uh, uh, Jupyter Notebooks, and that's what we provide here. We provide what we call Notebook Instances, so it's a special type of um, instance, of AWS instance, that you can create in, in one click or one API call. And, and when you open it, uh, a few minutes later, you jump directly into a Jupyter Notebook and, and all the nice tools that you like are installed. So TensorFlow is in there and PyTorch is in there. Uh, if you use a GPU instance, you have the NVIDIA drivers installed, etc. So it's a, time, it's a time saver. It's an easy way to create your dev environment in a couple of minutes and get to work. Okay, and then the next step in helping you is to uh, bring you a collection of built-in algorithms. Because there are a number of typical machine learning problems like uh, linear regression, um, clustering, um, uh, uh, nearest neighbors, uh, etc., classification, that, you know, they're well known. We have well known solutions, well known algos for those. So, unless you really enjoy writing a linear regression algo again, why not? Um, I think it's a better idea to take one of those built-in algos, just set a few parameters, s declare the, uh, where the old data lives in Amazon S3, and just get to work. Okay, so today we have 14 built-in algos. Uh, some, some of them are familiar, like I said, you know, k-means, PCA, uh, factorization machines, etc. But we also have some state-of-the-art algos that have been invented by Amazon researchers and, uh, and published as well. Uh, like uh, Deep AR for uh, complex time series or uh, uh, Blazing Text to compute uh, word embeddings, you know, word to vec uh, on GPU, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so it's, it's, a, it's a good mix of algos, and I would recommend that you, you look at them first. They m could save you a lot of time. If you want to uh, bring your own code, if you're a TensorFlow user or a PyTorch user, um, you already have that code running, right? It could be running on your server, on your laptop. And, and that's what you want to use, and of course, it's perfectly okay. So we also provide a number of pre-installed environments for TensorFlow, MXNet, Chainer, PyTorch, and you can just bring your own code. Okay, so literally drop your code into SageMaker, and it, it will train okay, and, 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 and predict. So you don't need to uh, install those libraries again. And I guess the last option is you want to use something else. Okay? You have your, uh, I would say, a Python algo or C++ algo, or your any library, any, any tool that you're using for training or prediction. You can also use it on SageMaker. Okay, I'll show you, uh, I'll show you that at the very end. Okay. Um, it's a short talk, so uh, you know, I don't want to give you too, much, uh, <laughs> too many details, but um, the way this works is actually told based on Docker containers. Okay, so don't worry if you're not familiar with Docker. You don't need to know much. Uh, about Docker, you need to know nothing about Docker actually, unless you want to build your own environment for training, and then you need to build a container. But again, I'll show you an example at the end, and uh, and you'll see it's not it's not painful. Okay, so bottom line, notebook instances get you uh, working and tweaking in minutes. Built-in algos and built-in environments uh, save you more time and get you quicker to uh, to experimentation and 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 actually training your data. And when it comes to training, um, that's one of my favorite parts because there's really zero work to do here. Once you've defined the, 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 the parameters for your uh, training job, all the only thing that you tell SageMaker is, okay, please train this on five um, you know, C4 Excel instances and you know, just do it, okay? And SageMaker will create that infrastructure, deploy the right container uh, for training to those instances, set up distributed training if you have multiple instances, et cetera, et cetera. The training, the training job will run, and then you get your model, your trained model in S3, and uh, you can go and deploy it on SageMaker, or you can grab it and deploy it on your laptop or your own server if you want to, okay? So zero infrastructure management. As a bonus, um, SageMaker terminates the training infrastructure 
as soon as the training job is complete. So that means you only pay for the training job. You never leave any servers on uh, for nothing, okay? Which could be a problem if you use, you know, EC2, EMR. Uh, you, you know, we tend to leave those things running for too long. Here, it, it shuts down automatically. Another cool feature is hyperparameter optimization. Uh, if you do machine learning today, you know that selecting the right parameters for a training job is actually difficult. And it's a lot of uh, guessing most of the times. Most of the time. So we have this feature called HPO that, uh, in a nutshell, uses machine learning to select the right hyperparameters for your jobs. Okay. So the way this works is, instead of training just once, um, you will ask SageMaker to train maybe 10, 20, 30 jobs. Okay. A, a small, a limited number of jobs, and then by looking at the results. Okay. By selecting. Uh, different v uh, values for hyperparameters and looking at the accuracy that you get. Uh, SageMaker applies optimization, it's called Bayesian optimization, and it, it quickly converges to, the, to the op an optimal set of parameters. Okay, so literally machine learning to improve machine learning. Pretty, pretty cool, I think. Uh, I told you you should have that coffee. Um, and it's a great way, again, to save time and, uh, and help you get better models quicker. So once you're happy with the model, you can deploy it uh, or, or not. Uh, like I said, you could grab the model in S3 and use it anywhere else. Or you could go on and deploy it. And again, it's a one-click thing, um, one API call thing. Please deploy my model to uh, four uh, M4 Excel instances. And again, SageMaker creates it, creates the infrastructure, deploys the model, creates an HTTPS endpoint to serve predictions, and, and you get the URL and you can post. Uh, to that URL. Uh, alternatively, you can do, uh, if you don't want to use HTTPS for a prediction, you can do batch transform. I'll show you an example as well. Uh, so batch transform is exactly what the name means. Uh, you train a model and then you run predictions in batch mode. Okay, so for some users, it's the preferred way to do it. Okay, um, so talking about customers, um, you know, we have uh, millions of customers on AWS. Uh, we have tens of thousands of customers doing machine learning every day. And when it comes to SageMaker, here are some, some examples. Um, so it's interesting to see two types of customers here. I'd say really big organizations, uh, you know, GE, Healthcare, Dow Jones, uh, Thomson Reuters, Intuit, so, you know, medical, um, financial information. So you can expect lots of data, lots of documents. Uh, Digital Globe is a satellite imaging company. They have 100 petabytes of uh, image data. Yeah, you heard that right, 100 petabytes. Uh, and it's growing every day. And they, they use SageMaker to, to, to do image classification and, and so on on those images. Zendesk, you know, um, it's a help desk support company. So again, lots of data. So you see those companies you know, with lots of enterprise data who need to scale uh, and, and run lots of uh, complex models. And then I would say on the other side, you see web companies like Hotels.com, um, Grammarly, uh, Tinder, that of course no one uses. Um, and I wonder why they would be interested in machine learning anyway. I don't see really the use case here. Um, and, and, and of course, these have uh, lots of user-generated data and, and they can use machine learning for recommendation, personalization, and generally making their websites or mobile apps more uh, engaging and more interesting. Uh, so enough slides. Let's take a look at a couple of demos. So I'm going to jump straight into SageMaker. So here's the SageMaker console. <laughs> Nothing to write home about. Uh, the first thing you would do is create a notebook instance. And it is not really complicated. You click here, give a few pieces of information, and off you go. And then, yeah, you have your instance. You can open it. And when you open it, you jump directly into a Jupyter notebook. OK, that's the actual interface. You can also SSH to the instance. Uh, or you can, have SSA, you can have shell access, you can't SSH, but you can have shell access to the instance through Jupyter and you can git clone and, and do all those good things. Okay, so let's look at a first, uh, a first notebook. So let's focus on machine, on uh, deep learning, of course, because that's the title of my talk. I'm not going to talk about the built-in algorithms, but 
Uh, I'll, I'll give you some references at the end. So here, let's say we want to use PyTorch. All right, anybody using PyTorch? Okay, a few people, all right. So PyTorch is one of those popular deep learning libraries. And here, it's a very basic example. I'm trying to classify images from the MNIST data set. So by now, I'm thinking all of you are tired with MNIST and you've seen it a million times. But it's, it's a good toy example, of course. It's good for nothing, but it's a good toy example. So that's MNIST, 60K images of uh, black and white digits, okay, 0 to 9. And of course, the game is to classify them correctly in 10 classes because 0 to 9, okay? So here, I, I will use the existing environment that is available for PyTorch on SageMaker. So I'm bringing my own PyTorch code, okay? So of course, I need to import the SageMaker SDK. It's a Python SDK that drives all the, all the training and prediction activity. Uh, I won't talk about it today, but if you are using Spark, there is also uh, a SageMaker Spark SDK in Python and uh, Scala that you can use on your Spark cluster to fire up uh, uh, SageMaker training and SageMaker prediction from your Spark app. Okay, great topic, but not for today. Um, I need to have an S3 bucket because that's where all the SageMaker data uh, should be stored and that's where SageMaker will put the train model, okay? So then I'm going to download MNIST for the billionth time. So I'm downloading it to the notebook instance, okay? And uh, for a real world, uh, with a real world data set, we would do some transformation and cleaning and, and clever data science on it. Here, nothing. It needs to be done so we can upload the data directly to S3, okay? Again, this is where SageMaker picks the data, right? And then I can just bring my uh, PyTorch script, okay? So this is a vanilla PyTorch example. It could run exactly the same on your laptop, on your own server, okay? So here I'm just taking this code. I'm, uh, I'm uploading it, I uploaded it to the notebook instance, and this is what I'm going to run on SageMaker, okay? So if you've never seen, if you've never seen PyTorch before, it's, it's a little bit scary, because PyTorch is a quite, uh, quite low level, but what we're doing here is we are building a simple uh, convolution neural network, and we should see that somewhere here, yeah. Here it is, okay. Here we're building the network convolution layers, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to use that to classify, the, classify the, the data set, OK? But it's not a PyTorch tutorial either, so let's skip that. Uh, just keep in mind, this is vanilla PyTorch code. You can take it, dump it in SageMaker, and it will run, OK? Um, so what we have to do to run this script is this, OK? So it's a one-line thing, pretty much. Uh, we used uh, a high-level object from the PyTorch, uh, from the SageMaker SDK, okay? No surprise, it's called PyTorch, good name for it. Um, the script that I showed you is a parameter to that object, okay? So here's my PyTorch code. Um, and the important thing is this, okay? Please train on two P3, two XL instances. That's it, okay? That's all it takes. These are GPU instances. Uh, and when we call fit, okay, we actually get training going, and SageMaker creates those instances, um, deploys the PyTorch container, injects your script, injects the hyperparameters that you set, uh, points everything at your data in S3, and it trains. Okay, and y no infrastructure setup. Just tell SageMaker how many instances you need, and off it goes. Okay, so. Uh, we can see the training log. You can also grab that log in, in CloudWatch. Uh, it's, it is streamed to CloudWatch, and after a while, we're done with our six epochs, and it lasted for 175 seconds. SageMaker terminates everything, so you stop paying for those uh, slightly expensive GPU instances, right? You don't want to leave them on all weekend. And then we can continue and deploy. Okay, and again, deploying is as easy as asking SageMaker to deploy on, in this case, one M4XL instance. Again, create the instance, deploy the container, deploy the model, create an HTTPS endpoint. Job done. One line. Compare this to how maybe you're doing it today. 
training, taking the model, writing your custom web app that wraps the model, deploying this to an API and taking care of load balancing and security and high availability and monitoring, you know. None of that stuff is machine learning work and yet it needs to be done, okay? Here, SageMaker takes care of all of it. And now we have an endpoint, so we could predict, okay, so let's try to classify some numbers. Oh no, no, that's ugly, oh come on, it's never gonna work. All right, we could try this one. Okay, it's a three. All right, so here I'm using the predict API in the SageMaker SDK, which is just calling HTTPS post on the endpoint that uh, I just deployed, okay? Uh, you can use the SDK or, again, you can just use curl or your favorite language to HTTP post to that endpoint, okay? All right, let's try another one. Let's try, uh, oh my God, no. <laughs> Okay, all right, two for two, I'll stop there. <laughs> okay, I can, draw, I can draw numbers, yeah. Okay, and if I wanted to, I could clean up, delete the endpoint, and I would stop paying for the endpoint as well, okay? So, in a nutshell, this is how you do it um, uh, with PyTorch. It would be exactly the same with uh, all the libraries. I can, uh, I can quickly show you uh, I can quickly show you uh, a TensorFlow, is that the TensorFlow? Yes. I can quickly show you the TensorFlow example, right? TensorFlow users? Ah, more. Okay, good. <laughs> so, same story, right? Uh, downloading MNIST, uh, uploading again to S3, bringing the TensorFlow MNIST CNN example, okay? And uh, we can see here building the convolution layers uh, for the network. Okay, so again, vanilla TensorFlow code. Okay, this time I'm using the TensorFlow object in the SageMaker SDK, but you can see it's exactly the same story. Okay, pass the script and run distributed training on two C4XL instances. Okay, call fit. SageMaker does its infrastructure management thing, okay? We see the training log, and we have different colors for different instances. And yes, I have a feature request to stop using red except for errors. Uh, but this seems to be a very, very difficult feature to implement because it's still not released, so crossing my fingers for reInvent. I'm sure they have bigger things to deal with, but seriously, this should be a a 10 minute thing, right, to fix. Uh, red is for errors, anyway. Uh, we train for 506 seconds. SageMaker terminates the instances. And this time, we could go on and deploy again to the endpoint, but I wanna show you an example of batch transform. Um, so, instead of calling deploy, we create that transformer object, uh, saying, okay, you're going to transform in batch mode on one M4XL instance, okay? And then we can just run our, uh, our data through that transform object. Okay, it's batch mode. So this time, no HTTPS endpoint, okay? And, and we could then, of course, uh, we could read our predictions and look at some examples. And you know, the, the, re the prediction results get uh, written back to S3 and, and we, can, uh, we can check them out, okay? So that's the other way to use it. Uh, and, uh, okay, l the last example maybe I want to show you uh, is, uh, how am I doing on time? Yeah, okay, not, not too bad. Um, the, the last example I want to show you is um, something different, so uh, not in this this time. I want to show you another library called uh, Apache MXNet, which uh, AWS uh, contributes to and, and also uses for uh, our own services, some of our own services. And this one is a sentiment analysis example, okay? So different use case, different type of network. This is uh, an LSTM network, not a CNN. And, uh, but the whole workflow is the same. So again, download the data set. It's a movie review data set. So one line reviews where the one, if, if, if it's a positive review and zero if it's a negative review, okay? Simple data set, download it. Again, no cleaning required. 
uh, no processing required, so we can upload it directly to S3. And we bring our MXNet script, okay? Uh, and this one is a little more complicated because it's, it's LSTM, okay? But uh, again, you could take this thing and run it on your machine, right? It would work. Okay, so just bring the script. And once again, we use this high-level MXNet object, right? It's, you know, PyTorch, SageMaker, <laughs> MXNet, and Chainer, same, same architecture. Uh, pass the script as a parameter. Uh, train on one C4 S, uh, 2XL instance. Pass some hyperparameters to the training job called fit. And of course, it trains, and after a bit, well, 259 seconds, we have a model in S3. We go on and deploy it again, okay? And, uh, and we can predict, right? So um, we have some examples here, okay? So when we see predictions, okay? Keep in mind, when we call predict, we are really invoking that HTTPS endpoint. Um, and so if you think, anybody thinks uh, Star Wars Episode One was not a waste of time? No? Yeah, all right. So just in case, right? Just in case you're not uh, comfortable with not being comfortable. I got that from the previous talk. <laughs> Very good. I, rem I will remember that. Okay, so if you think Star Wars Episode One uh, is great, then your uh, review gets classified as a positive review. Okay? Just we could try it. My opinion is it's going to fail because it's a small data set, but I don't, I don't mind failing. Yep, so not enough data. So, But if you say, yeah, you have to be more direct. You, know? you have to be French. <laughs> there you go, right? Just say what you mean, right? Say what you mean, especially this one. It was awful. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. So there you go. Uh, pretty easy to, to run some, some predictions. Okay, maybe as a very, very last example, because this is a cool one, I think. Uh, what if you want to bring something else? Okay, what if you don't want to use a built-in algo? What if you don't want to use any of the um, uh, built-in uh, deep learning environments? So let's say you want to use Keras. Okay, anybody using Keras? Okay, all right, thank you. So Keras is a, is a high-level library that sits on top of different backends like TensorFlow, uh, Theano, and MXNet now, okay? So here, I want to use Keras with MXNet, uh, so I need to build my Docker container, okay? So I won't go into all the details, I just want to show you this, and you can find this on the, this notebook on, on GitLab, I'll, I'll share the references. Um, I need to build a container that uh, stores, obviously, uh, Keras, MXNet, and here I decided to keep it simple. I'm also putting my, uh, my script inside the container. Okay, so it's a bit of a uh, lazy way to do it because if I need to change code, uh, I, I will uh, have to rebuild my container, but okay, I want to keep it simple here. So I'm starting from an Ubuntu image, adding some dependencies for uh, Keras MXNet, copying my MNIST uh, CNN script into the container with a well-known name. So that script needs to be called train and it needs to be executable because that's the entry point for SageMaker, right? SageMaker needs to know what to invoke inside the container, okay? Then I'm installing MXNet and Keras and that's about it, okay? So when I said, if you even if you don't know Docker, you can run the, the, the Docker tutorial on docker.com and, and know more than enough to build your Docker file to run your uh, fancy uh, PHP deep learning library on SageMaker. No, nah, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. No JS? No? Okay, no, no. Don't do it either. Okay. Uh, use serious things. Okay. Um, so that's the container. And if I wanted to build a GPU enabled version, then I would start this time from a CUDA image because it has all, all the CUDA libraries, the NVIDIA drivers, so I don't even have to install that. The rest is pretty much the same. L dependencies, copy my script, uh, make sure I have the CUDA uh, 
enabled version of MXNet, and that's it. Okay, so the Docker file is going to be very, very short. Okay, it's the environment and your code, pretty much. Okay. Uh, okay, then I need to uh, make sure I have. Uh, I, I need to build this container and push it to Amazon ECR, which is our Docker registry. Okay. Uh, so I need to make sure I have a, a repository there. Then I can build. And if you know Docker, this is standard Docker stuff. Build the image push it to ECR, okay? And from then on, it's identical to all the previous examples. We have a container with the right structure inside of ECR, so we can put our data in S3. And this time, we're not going to use the MXNet or the PyTorch or the TensorFlow object. We use a more generic object called Estimator. And the only difference is you have to pass the name of the container that you're using, right? When you use the TensorFlow object, it knows to pull how to uh, what what container to pull right tensorflow container here it's more generic so we have to pass the image name that we built and then we call fit and we can see if you know keras we can see the keras log here right and after a while we get to our model right and we save the model and it ends up in s3 and you can use it okay and we can go on and, and deploy it so that's pretty much you know the the big picture of using uh of using SageMaker uh with the with deep learning models okay so the l very last thing i want to talk about in uh, just a few minutes is of course okay it's all good and uh, it's and nice to 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 use those libraries and to have oh, interesting uh, and to have those tools uh uh, available in SageMaker with a zero installation, fully managed infrastructure, etc. But okay, what if we want to build a little more? What if we like to, to tinker and, and we're trying to build uh, um, a real-world app? Well, uh, that's another thing we released in reInvent, at reInvent last year. It's called DeepLens. It's, it's here. Hopefully it's still, still running. <laughs> uh, it looks like it, it's hot, so it's probably running. So it's, uh, it's a project with Intel. It runs an Intel uh, Atom board uh, with an Intel um, HD graphics um, chip and that has a very tiny uh, GPU uh, powerful enough to do um, video processing. Okay? And so the again, in a nutshell, the way this works is um, you train a machine learning model. Okay? So SageMaker is probably a a nice way to do that. There's an integration between SageMaker and DeepLens. You write uh, a, a bit of code, so it's going to be a Lambda function, right? So I'm guessing again you heard about Lambda, a serverless technology that lets you write and, and run uh, small pieces of code, okay? So you can write your Lambda function in the cloud and test it there. And then you can deploy it with the model to the camera. Okay, and to do this, we use another AWS service called Greengrass. And Greengrass is an IoT service that takes care of deploying code to edge devices like DeepLens. Okay, but you could use it on uh, Raspberry Pis and other things as well. So that's the really the basic idea. Train a model, write uh, the prediction lambda function, deploy all of that easily to the camera, and then point the camera st at stuff <laughs> and see <laughs> if, uh, if it works. So uh, we have some sample projects. Uh, I've got one live. I'll show you in a minute. So um, it literally takes 10 minutes to, uh, to install this from unboxing to uh, 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 starting uh, doing silly things, 10, 10, 15 minutes. So face detection and, uh, p and object detection and dog versus cats and hot dog, not hot dog. And if you don't know why we're obsessed with hot dogs, congratulations, it just means you have a life uh, and you're not watching too much TV, so keep on doing that, please, right? Uh, I'm scared where every when everybody knows about the hot dog. Come on, do something useful with your life, okay? Um, and of course, you could train and create your own projects. Uh, we have a number of community projects. Uh, you will find them on, the, on our website. Just look for Deep Lens Community Projects. Uh, so uh, these, comes from, uh, these come from hackathons and, and all kinds of initiatives. And uh, developers have actually built pretty uh, fun uh, applications with Deep Lens. There is one to read, uh, to read uh, sign language. Okay, so I 
I cannot do sign language, sorry. But if I knew, you know, you could do sign language in front of the camera and it knows how to read it. So pretty nice, okay? So let's do a quick demo and then I'm, I'm out of here. Um, so it's my cam is all configured, of course. Here we go. Is that, no, that's too tiny, okay. Okay, so I've got a device. It's online, okay, it's connected through Wi-Fi. Uh, I have some projects uh, ready. So like I said, you could create more projects, some of the sample ones, but also uh, create a completely new project where you would bring your own uh, image model and, and Lambda function. Okay, but uh, I don't have time to show you that one today. So we'll just stick to uh, the, the existing projects. Come on, you're not going to die on me now. Wi-Fi, come on. Uh, so the one that is actually live, mm, interesting. I should not have clicked on that tab. <laughs> come on. Yeah. It's going to come back. All right. Okay. Here we go. So I'm using my phone, so that's why it's a little slower than, than usual. Uh, so I have a project here that is, uh, um, it's an object detection project. Okay, so it's a, it's a single shot detector model that knows uh, how to detect 20 classes. Okay, uh, and uh, people are one of the classes and it can also detect uh, chairs and, and bottles and uh, and oh my goodness, M wow, amazing. I don't, okay, let me get a screenshot. <laughs> I don't think I got so many people in the, in the, in the picture. All right, I'm gonna tweet that one. Okay, so, um, so well, that's what you see, right? Uh, so what happens here is, of course, the, 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 the camera captures the video stream and it, it runs, the Lambda function that you deployed with Greengrass runs forever. It's an infinite loop, right? So you're actually allowed to write <laughs> infinite loops here. Um, and it, what it does is it captures a frame, um, runs it through the deep learning model. Okay, so here it's the object detection model. Okay. Uh, it will get the output from the model. So here we'll get, uh, quite a long list of uh, bounding boxes, okay? Uh, coordinates with uh, the class um, uh, identifier, so mostly persons here, which is good, and a probability. And then uh, it uses, uh, in this case, it uses the uh, OpenCV library to draw the bounding box, so to, to actually apply this information on the, on the frame that you see here, and then it gives the frame back. To, uh, to the framework, and that's what you get. That's what gets uh, displayed here. So just, does anybody have a water bottle? Or a beer bottle? Not that would work. A uh, cup, I don't think a cup is gonna work. I don't think it's one of the classes. Oh yeah, okay, would you mind? <laughs> uh, we c can we try it here? All right, just, yeah, just put it here. Come on, Duplantz. Uh, it, it should see all of it. If it, yeah. That should work. There we go. Bottle, see? Thank you. <laughs> so it can also recognize airplanes and bicycle, but I don't think you have a bicycle in your pocket. So we'll, we'll stick to bottles and people, okay? So that's Duplantz. So that's, it's a pretty fun thing now. The bad news is uh, it's only available uh, in the US at the moment. Uh, so you, uh, it, it can only be delivered in the US. It's an electronic device, so it needs to pass through all the certifications, etc. But we're working on it. We're working on bringing this to Europe. So, uh, you know, I would hope by the end of the year, but uh, it's, it's hard to know exactly. So keep your eyes uh, peeled. Uh, hopefully you'll be uh, able pretty soon to uh, to buy this, all right, and, and work on your own deep learning projects. 
So uh, just a few more, a few, uh, whoops, a few URLs to, uh, to get you started. Okay, here we go. So if you want to get started uh, with, I would say, machine learning on AWS in general, uh, oh, come on. Um, you can go to ml.aws. That's an easy one to remember. Uh, we also have a, a technical blog. Uh, that's the URL. You'll find some uh, code and articles and customer blog posts as well, etc. cetera. Um, I also have a blog on Medium where I share some uh, SageMaker content and um, and um, uh, deep learning content in general, so quite technical. Well, hopefully you'll like that. And uh, by now I have a pretty good collection of uh, videos, of talks, and uh, and uh, uh, AWS summits, etc., on, on YouTube. So if you want again to know more about SageMaker, deep learning, and the other services, the high-level services, uh, you'll find all of that on. Um, on uh, and and the no uh, references to the notebooks etc. You'll find all of that on on Medium and YouTube. All right. If you want to stay in touch, um, you can. I'm happy to connect on LinkedIn, of course. Uh, if you have questions or if you want to uh, share some content, you can ping me on Twitter. It's uh, usually the, the easiest way to to get in touch for me, uh, and uh, I'll be more than happy to uh, to share your content and help you out. Thank you very much again for inviting me. It's it was great to uh, to be in uh, Gdansk again. And uh, please enjoy the rest of the conference. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julien. So I have a